Good day and welcome to Space Station Live for Tuesday, August 6th, 2013. You are inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room in the midst of a loss of signal period where the International Space Station is out of range at the moment from our tracking and data relay satellite system. The Orbit 2 team of flight controllers taking a short break before returning to consoles to oversee the work of the Expedition 36 crew on board the orbital outpost. It has been an extremely busy day so far and will continue to be a busy day for the six crew members on board the International Space Station. The half dozen crew members are divided into two trios who arrived at the International Space Station on separate Russian Soyuz vehicles two months apart. On the left of your screen in this crew portrait, Alexander Mazurkin, the current uh, station commander, Pavel Vinogradov, and NASA flight engineer, Chris Cassidy, who rode uh, their Soyuz TMA-08M spacecraft from the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to a docking to the Poisk module on the International Space Station back on March 29th. Just two months later, the other trio of crew members for Expedition 36 arrived, Karen Nyberg, the NASA flight engineer, Soyuz commander Fyodor Yurchikin, and European Space Agency flight engineer Luca Parmitano, who arrived arrived uh, on their Soyuz TMA-09M spacecraft, docking to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station on May 29th. The day has been highlighted uh, by a variety of activities involving Robonaut, the humanoid robot uh, that was set up yesterday uh, in the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station and which uh, on this day was operated uh, telerobotically by Chris Cassidy that you see here in video that we acquired earlier in the day uh, as Robonaut was put through its paces, uh, moving its head, its neck, and its arms on command from Cassidy wearing a specially equipped vest in which he sent uh, commands uh, in a telerobotically fashion uh, to the Robonaut humanoid robot to uh, continue to gather research on the ability of robots to interact with humans on board the International Outpost. The 300-pound uh, Robonaut consists of a head and torso with two arms and two hands. It was launched uh, aboard uh, the shuttle Discovery on the STS-133 mission about two and a half years ago and has been acquiring critical data for researchers on the ground who are uh, perfecting uh, the techniques uh, used uh, to uh, operate robots in orbit from ground control venues. The work uh, of the Expedition 36 crew on board the International Space Station also highlighted today by uh, looking ahead towards a pair of spacewalks in the weeks ahead by Russian cosmonauts Fyodor Yurchikin and Alexander Mazurkin as they continue to gather and prepare a series of tools that they will take outside the pier's docking compartment with them for a pair of spacewalks on August 16th and August 22nd clad in Russian Orlan spacesuits to continue hooking up uh, cables uh, and and other uh, equipment outside for the future arrival of a Russian laboratory module that is scheduled to be launched uh, late this year on top of Proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. All the while, another cargo ship is headed for the International Space Station. The Japanese H-2 transfer vehicle, or HTV-4 as it is known, uh, more affectionately by the name of Kanatori, uh, the uh, Japanese word for white stork. The HTV-4 was launched uh, from the Tanegashima Space Center in southern Japan on Saturday U.S. time and has been steadily making its way toward the International Space Station, conducting a series of rendezvous burns, uh, the latest of which is taking place uh, to fine-tune its path to the International Space Station, where crew members Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy uh, will reach out with the station's robotic arm working from a robotic workstation in the cupola of the International Space Station. They'll grapple uh, the HTV-4, maneuver it uh, very carefully so that its berthing mechanism is perfectly aligned with a common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module, and then slowly but surely uh, mating it to Harmony where it will be bolted into place for a month's stay at the International Space Station. The HTV-4 is loaded uh, with valuable cargo, uh, both uh, inside uh, the spacecraft 
itself called pressurized cargo and unpressurized cargo that uh, is housed on an exposed pallet in a slot on the side of the HTV-4. The cargo consists of just about 4,100 pounds of dry cargo, spare parts, and experiment supplies, some 1,257 pounds of water and two dozen contingency bags, and then on the outside in that exposed pallet that will be removed robotically from the HTV-4 and handed off to the Japanese robotic arm on the Kibo module for installation on the outside of Kibo. There are three critical spare parts, a main bus switching unit, a utility transfer assembly, and a, uh, an experiment uh, suite uh, for the Department of Defense called the uh, Space Test Program 4 pallet. All of that equipment uh, to be housed on a variety of uh, external logistics uh, platforms on the truss of the International Space Station. Early this morning, uh, Luca Parmitano of the International uh, Space Station's crew, the European Space Agency flight engineer, was in the uh, Quest airlock uh, continuing his work to troubleshoot a video cable uh, associated with a camera system inside Quest that has been acting up in recent uh, weeks. Uh, that uh, troubleshooting effort continues. Uh, you see uh, Parmitano working in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock. Uh, behind him is the crew lock section, which uh, uh, crew members uh, float into clad in their U.S. spacesuits uh, before they close the hatch, depressurize uh, the Quest airlock, and open the outside hatch to begin spacewalks from the U.S. side of the International Space Station. Later today, Parmitano will be conducting uh, some in-flight maintenance work as he replaces a pressure control and pump assembly for the urine processing assembly in the water recovery system that failed late last week. And that's a glimpse of all of the work that's taking place on board the International Space Station for this Tuesday, August 6th.